Hi. Hi. So today was supposed to be my Panasonic GH5 review. However, the dates that it was supposed to come were this week, but looking at it again yesterday when it didn't come, I realized it's two weeks out. Um, so I won't have that for another two weeks, so I'll have to wait to do that review, which is a little disappointing, but you know what? I'm just adjusting here. So... What I want to do today is look at uh, mixing a voiceover. I'm not talking specifically about recording a voiceover. That could be a whole nother episode. And so I'm going to be working in Adobe Audition because I'm in the Adobe Creative Cloud. And what Audition does is it's going to show you the waveform up here. And then it's also going to show you a spectral graph down here where you actually have frequencies and amplitudes all on the same uh, display, which is really great if you're trying to look at frequencies that are problematic or anything like that. So we're in the Audition interface, and I've already pulled in our audio file. Um, and the first thing we want to do is work with a compressor. I like Waves a lot, so I'm going to pull up the Waves C1. We'll see what that looks like. A gray-haired guy at his longtime Remington Park personality. So I'm going to pull the threshold down till, to about 25 under, um, just under time. the peaking of our audio. And uh, you can go a little harder on compression for voiceover because these, like I said, are going to be at the top of the mix, right at the front, uh, driving your narrative. So I'm going to try 7 to 1, see what that sounds like. Racehorse aficionado Chris Katulak, who knew to first take us. So I'm actually going to pull that back to about 4 to 1, see what that sounds like. To the starting gate introductions. So next, we're going to pull up an EQ, and I really like this Fab Filter EQ. There's a lot of ways you can fine-tune your sound, and uh, the best part about it is you can analyze what's actually going on in the frequency spectrum. So just to look at the unprocessed audio right now, see what it looks like on an EQ level. Two- and three-year-old magnificent babies are born and bred to run, but they're not familiar with that foreign object. And First thing I'm going to do is do a hard low cut because anything that's going on in your room below 100 hertz you're really not going to want or need. Um, so I'm just going to cut all that out. In front of them, the starting gate. So before they run, it's a long... So after the low cut, you just kind of use the EQ tool to even out your audio. With this Bluebird mic, um, it doesn't have as much grit in the low end like the uh, Rode NTG3. So really, it's just about giving it some air, um, evening it out, and making it sound a lot better from uh, an EQ perspective. So once you get your EQ to a place where you like it and it sounds really even, we'll move on to the next tool. And in this case, if you compress dialogue uh, to a certain extent, you get a lot of sibilance problems. Sibilance is the S, the, the T's, the uh, sounds our mouth makes when we try to say those certain letters. So we'll use a de-esser tool for that. DSing is just a compressor that compresses on certain frequency bands. In this case, most men's sibilance is going to be really strong between 5 and 6,000 hertz. So we'll actually pull up the Fab Filter again just to look at our audio. Of quietly walking that. Let's find an S, a strong S in his, his dialogue. The starting gate. The starting gate. So we're going to just highlight that and go through it. The starting gate. 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 The starting. So you can see his S's are a little above five thousand, somewhere between five and ten thousand. So we'll kind of bump this up to say seven thousand, turn it back on, and see what happens. And once that gets to a place where you like it, you can just kind of apply it and move on. Familiar with that foreign object in front of him, the starting gate. So next from there, we're going to actually do limiting before we do our gate. And the reason I do that is just to make the gate more effective. So I'm going to pull up the Fab Filter Pro L, which is a really effective limiting tool. Across the screen, as it's moving through time, you can see your input gain, and then you can see what you add to it on top of it. So let me show you here. We're going to set our out ceiling to minus 0 0.03 decibels, give us some headroom, go ahead and play the audio. A gray-haired guy at his longtime Remington Park personality. And then we're just going to fade up the gain in the limiter plug-in until we're peaking right around zero. To the starting gate introductions. These two and three-year-old magnificent babies are born and bred to run. Another tool you can use when you're doing dialogue is a multi-band compressor, and this is going to act like a compressor, but it works on four different frequency bands, so you can compress different frequencies at different amounts. This is really effective for voiceover. We're going to use just a stock setting here on the Wave C4. And we're going to see what this sounds like. Who knew? to first take us to the starting gate introductions. 
These two and three-year-old magnificent babies are born and bred to run, but they're not familiar with that foreign object in front of them, the starting gate. So before they run... So now I'm going to pull up a gate, and what a gate does is, again, it's a Dynamics processor. It acts like a compressor, but it just completely eliminates any audio source under a designated threshold. So the threshold being there right around 37, negative 37 dBFS it looks pretty good right now because it's still going to catch some of his big breaths in between his statements, but for the most part, it's doing a good job of cutting it between his words. And so I think I'll just manually take out some of those breaths. We'll listen through again from the top. A gray-haired guide is longtime Remington Park personality and lifetime racehorse aficionado, Chris Katulak. Let's see if we punch it up. Who knew to first take us to the starting gate introductions. So finally, with all those things applied, I'm just going to show a difference side by side with the limiter still engaged so that there's no difference in amplitude. Here is the signal basically dry, just boosted, with the limiter in the gate. A gray-haired guide is longtime Remington Park personality and lifetime racehorse aficionado. And then here it is with all our plugins that are affecting all the frequencies. A gray-haired guide is longtime Remington Park personality and lifetime racehorse aficionado, Chris Katulak, who knew to first take us to the starting gate introductions. So now we apply the effects rack, and it'll bake all those channel strips into the actual audio file, which is really effective if you're using Premiere, because then you don't have to worry about plugins sitting on a channel strip in Premiere, clogging everything up. It already bakes it in there, and it's good to go. And you can see the black in between his words, where the gate is just taking out all audio. There's no audio anymore in between anything he says, which is nice and clean. It'll allow it to sit really good in the mix right at the front, like a good voiceover should. And then you just save it, bring it in to your editor, and you should be good to go. So that's basically it for this voiceover tutorial. Keep your eyes out for the GH5 review. It should be two weeks now. Um, if I looked at the dates right, when it's gonna come, I'm gonna go out and do a, uh, my best review on the thing and see how, it, see how it works in comparison to the GH4. If you have any ideas for what I should cover in the future, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hit subscribe to keep these. Otherwise, hit subscribe. Mm. If you any, ah, uh, be sure and hit subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing. Mm. I'm gonna keep posting videos every Friday, whether it's tutorials or gear reviews or just talking about film and music in general. Every Friday, I'm just gonna share some thoughts on this wild world of being a professional creative. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.